at the November 14th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Uh, we first have to approve the agenda. Um, so if I can get a motion for that from Planning Commissioner. I move that I we move approve the agenda. Okay, we have a motion from Gabe. Do we have a second? I'll um, second. Oh. I'm going to take Ariane second uh, as opposed to Aaron's burp. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we have a motion from Gabe and a second from Ariane. Those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, okay, for tonight, we have a few things to go through. Um, next on the agenda is comments from the chair. Uh, the only thing we have, I don't want to hold things up because I know we have some visitors. Uh, the only thing we have uh, that's not on the agenda is there is a municipal planning grant um, application that we need to approve of, and I think I'll need to sign. Um, Mike has the details, so so Mike, why don't you explain uh, what's going on with that? Yes, we didn't have anybody who we didn't have any projects that were on our list for municipal planning grants, but the Public Works Department came over and said they had worked with. Uh, a company that does um, basically LIDAR imaging of the roadways. Uh, and they've done this for other communities and they've used municipal planning grant funds to help pay for it. Uh, we use it to offset some of our costs for our pavement quality index. So every three years we go through and re basically drive down the road with high resolution cameras and take pictures of the roads and then determine where it's most important for us to do crack sealing, where it's, important to do certain things. So uh, DPW wanted to go and use the funds uh, municipal planning grant for that. So uh, I told them it was going to be fine. So we're doing a kind of a rush application really quick on that. So uh, we're going to council on Wednesday to get the application idea approved. And the other piece that needs to happen is uh, Kirby needs to sign it, recognizing the approval of the planning commission. So So is everyone okay with DPW using uh, this planning grant uh, for the roads? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's vote then. Um, can we have a motion to uh, support Montpelier's application for the for a municipal resolution for a municipal planning grant? I so move. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Ariane. Okay, those in, those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Okay, there we go. Um, just uh, for the logistics, Mike, um, you want me to print it and sign it? What do you want me to do? Yeah, if you could just sign it and scan it and send it back to me, then I can have that to bring to council to have them sign it okay okay i'll do that tonight or tomorrow um all right sounds good uh so the next on the agenda is we have general business i don't believe we have anyone here that's not on the agenda but if anyone's here for any comments for something that's not on the agenda now's the time okay so not seeing any takers there uh the next thing on the agenda is uh um, an update about reappointments. Um, I am aware of one person who's applied and um, is seeking to be approved by the city council and um, not putting you on the spot at all, but, but it's, it's, it's Brian Mills who's in the chat now. Um, so Brian and I met uh, last week. Um, he has a great background for what we need. Um, he's done lobbying with among many things in his career he's, he's done lobbying with local governments so the kind of outreach stuff that we've kind of pulled our hair out about before um we're going to just make him do it all so uh <laughs> that'll teach me that'll teach me <laughs> so so yeah welcome to the meeting brian thank, thank you. you for applying awesome no i look forward to it thanks everybody yeah 
And we, uh, you know, we have the other empty seat. And I believe, Ariane, you'd mentioned that you knew someone who might be interested. Is that true? Yeah, although I don't, you know, she said she might be interested, but I'll follow up because I'll see her this week. So I'll see how far that goes. <laughs> yeah, I'm hopeful, um, really hopeful. And, and I, I, I like that you said she because... We don't have balanced representation right now. Um, so that's awesome. Okay, so that's that's it about that. Um, so next on the agenda is the update from SE Group. Um, so I'll just hand it over to Mike and Aiden and Julia for that. Thank you, thank you. Um, I am in Nikoff from SE Group. I see some familiar faces, but many more faces than our last um, planning commission meeting. So thank you all for being here. Um, I will hand it over to Julia to introduce herself and to give an update. Um, but from sort of a bigger picture side, um, we have incorporated Mike and Kirby's comments from the previous planning commission meeting. Thank you for sending those over. Um, we have an updated version of the historic resources chapter and a new version of the economic development chapter. Um, and Julia will kind of walk through sort of what decisions were made, what questions we have, um, and where we're at with our others. We do have some data requests out right now for um, economic development, energy, and housing. And some of that data is kind of trickling in, um, but we'll be able to highlight a few places where we need more data, more photos, and we can kind of workshop that with the group about the best source um, or just kind of uh, hold our horses until Mike and the Regional Planning Commission can provide um, data and background for us. Um, Julia, go for it. Hi everyone, I'm Julia. Uh, thank you for having us this evening. Um, I work with Aiden on the community planning team at SC Group and um, we're excited to uh, share with you our progress on this project. So I believe this is the right screen that I'm sharing. Yes. Can everyone see my screen here? Great. Um, so as Aiden mentioned, um, we have the revised historic resources chapter, um, a new economic development chapter, and I also have the old draft of the historic resources chapter, so we can just compare changes that way. That may be the easiest way to see the changes, um, but just to give an overview of the major uh, changes from the initial draft from last time, um, we got some great feedback from Mike and Kirby um, that mostly related to um, you know, making sure that these story maps conform to the existing outlines um, for the plan chapters that you all have um, reviewed for, as part of the city plan. Um, so highlighting things like the relationship to other, between this chapter and other chapters in the plan, um, and things like who is responsible for carrying this out in addition to city staff, who are the players involved. Um, so the basic outline that um, we're now working with, um, thanks to Mike's input, is we're sort of opening, I'll just scroll through um, as I talk about this outline that we can look at it more more detail. Uh, we start with, um, you know, some uh, small bites is what we can call it here, just like little bursts of text that introduce um, a bit about what this uh, topic is about um, and provide any definitions that might be necessary um, and also provide sort of a visual context for the topic that we're talking about. So historic resources, we're, we're showing pictures of historic buildings here. Um, and then following that section, we move into background. Um, and this can be more of a map focused section um, showing any relevant um, spatial data uh, that has been collected thus far or provides good context for the topic that we are um, reviewing in this story map. Um, so as an example here, we have the historic district shown. Um, then this is also an opportunity, uh, you know, just following this section to, or within this section to link 
to existing efforts uh, that have already taken place. Um, so, you know, in the um, as we edit these chapters and really fill them out, um, that's absolutely something that we can add. One of the great things about this story map platform is we can add these hyperlinks um, like this. Um, and, you know, it's a good way of making sure that this document relates to things that already exist without it, um, you know, being too bogged down with that information. Next is the players, basically who, who's helping out with this. Um, and then this next section, we've called it synergies here. This is a you know, tab that can link to this section. Um, but this is uh, what's called in the, in the plan chapter. I think it's um, how this chapter relates to other plan chapters. So um, we've just shortened that a bit here. Um, but this section is um, you know, intended to show the ways historic resources, for example, relates to housing, energy, um, and other um, initiatives of the plan that uh, don't have their own chapter, but you know are obviously important to the city, like health and safety. Um, next is the goals and aspirations section. Um, we've presented this in two different ways in the historic resources and economic development uh, section. So it would be great to have your input on which um, version you prefer. Um, but this uh, summarizes, you know, the intentions that are laid out in the, at the end of each plan section. Um, and then finally, there's a link to um, implementation. And I think this is, you know, uh, remains to be seen how we will um, incorporate implementation here. I think we're um, sort of waiting on, um, you know, feedback on, on the rest of the uh, document here. And um, it'll be an ongoing conversation, I think, with the city, uh, with Mike, to figure out what are the things that the city would like to show in terms of progress um, on the plan implementation and, you know, what is um, ongoing updates to this section at the end here look like. Um, so that was a really fast <laughs> overview of the uh, basic outline uh, for this. I'll also just scroll through the economic development uh, one so you can get an idea of how it looks for that chapter. And then we can uh, look at either chapter uh, or both chapters uh, at a slower pace and more in more detail. Um, so we've got a similar map there. So here's economic development. And I want to say <laughs> I used uh, all these photos from Monthly or Alive. So before this would be launched publicly, we'd need to get permission for those. But um, you know, these are really high quality photos of Montpelier, and I think they show how important it is to have, um, you know, those really awesome shots of the place and definitely, you know, the people enjoying the place. So, um, I'll just scroll through here, um, not at a pace where we could read anything, but just to, you know, get a sense of, of what this is looking like. So um, this is a background section. We are um, another piece of feedback that we can return to once we uh, begin discussing this is um, whether this section, this background information um, should move down to this map fo focus section um, to kind of prove that, that information there. Um, so again, this is the map focus section to, um, to show the background um, and progress that's been made on economic development. Um, this section will explain things like the designated downtown status um, and Montpelier status as a designated growth center. The players, And we've got synergies again. In this version, we've incorporated a couple images that relate to the different chapters. So those being transportation and historic resources. 
And then this is the goals and aspirations section. So instead of, um, you know, this uh, center justified um, text section, um, this is a more image focused version of this. So it'd be great to hear which version you prefer. Um, I think, you know, the advantage here is this is a bit more engaging, uh, visually appealing to look at, um, but it does involve more scrolling on the left. Um, so following this goals and aspirations section, um, I've also identified some just additional strategies. These are things that are mentioned in the chapter that, you know, don't fall under that goals and strategies section. Um, but they are, you know, things that are mentioned in the chapter that the city would like to work on and grow. Um, so I've, I've included them here. I think they could go in a different spot as well, maybe implementation. Um, but I thought they were important to include as well. And then, as we mentioned before, um, implementation comes at the end, and this is something that the city will be able to um, update in time um, to show progress on the plan. Um, so that was a lot of <laughs> scrolling. Um, I know that wasn't enough time to, to read through things, um, but are there any initial questions or things that people would like to look at again? Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much, Julia. This, this is actually really wonderful. Um, it, it's a great first impression. Um, so yeah, planning commissioners, do you have any, uh, anything you want to look at again or any initial feedback here? So then the, so this is like, these are the landing pages for each of the chapters and then they'll a to be determined sort of strategy section where it'll get into details on the strategy and also where the city would track. Is that sort of what we're talking about? Yeah, that's right. And what is here right now is a reflection of the plan chapters um, that have yeah. already been written. So all of that text. Um, yeah. yeah. And then they will link to the more precise, the, the full plan chapter and also the more precise implementation strategies. Yeah. yeah. Looks, it looks really good. Yeah, I would say it looks great. Um, and maybe you mentioned this and I just missed it, but what's going to be in the synergies tab? Are you just going to sort of like link to the other ones that are most closely related to that chapter? Yeah, so the synergies section um, is still going to be here and we will link to the different plan chapters. Um, but uh, this is really just summarizing um, how this chapter relates to the whole plan. And this is actually a chapter, a section in each of the existing plan chapters. Um, so this isn't like new content that we are creating. Um, we're adapting it from the, from the plan chapters. Yeah, so, so yeah, to clarify there, Ariane, it, um, you remember how we had in each chapter, we have a, a section on how does this relate to the other chapters? Yeah, apparently um, I, I totally forgot that. <laughs> Thanks for reminding there, me. Well, we, I mean, we were talking about what words to use for that when it comes to the web-based plan and um, synergies was one of the ones we threw out there. Um, so it looks like, um, did, uh, what's the feedback from SE Group? I and mean, what's your feedback for, for how things are coming together? I mean. Is synergy is a good word? Is what are your thoughts about the amount of text? Because I know our chapters have a lot of text. Is that are we losing people by having that much? I mean, like, what are your opinions? Aiden or Julia, either of you. Julia, what do you want to take it? Because I know you had some questions about sort of where things showed up, sure. um, how best to kind of condense and reorganize some of the existing information so that we had some of those introduction style um, information bits that kind of led into others. Yeah, I think our like one of our main questions um, and things that would be helpful to hear from the group today um, is if 
you know, it's important to have these chapters as they're laid out in story maps here, um, be identical to each other. Um, because there is, um, you know, there's just different content that's provided in the, in the different chapters. Um, and so one thing that we have found is, you know, there's really great in information, for example, about Montpelier's existing conditions um, for economic development and its sort of context um, in the region. Um, but there's not, you know, there's not a similar section or role for that in the historic resources chapter. There's definitely some discussion here about how Montpelier's downtown and, you know, how intact it is, um, is unique for the community, but uh, there's not this amount of, you know, discussion about, um, you know, the, the actual metrics related to employment, for example, you know what I mean? So this is one thing that we're running into is, um, you know, we want to provide this information. It's really, I think it's important context. Um, it, should this be grouped into a background section just below here, that would make this section a bit longer and less focused on the map um, itself. Uh, or is this something that, you know, can just be adaptable from chapter to chapter? Like, you know, in, in this economic development chapter, it's here. Um, in another chapter, there might be another special section. So that's one thing that we'd like to hear today. Um, if, um, you know, the group has opinions on the uh, different section of, sections of the plan and if they should all be identical here um, or just as much as we can. I, I think we will have these headings in common across all of the um, plan chapters. So that will be standard. Um, but yeah, we're just looking for some feedback on that and then maybe we can go into more specifics too. Well, I, I mean, uh, for me personally, I, I don't think they need to be absolutely identical. I think that um, it's it makes it more intuitive for the reader if they can expect roughly the same thing on each page, but if we have a little bit more background on one page than another, like I think economic development is one of the ones that stands out as having the most like current context. Um, I don't, I don't think the other chapters are going to have as much of that. Yep. Um, what are, what are other people's thoughts? And, and I can rephrase the question if anybody Needs. No, I mean, I, I agree. I think as much as, a, as as possible and then, you know, just make adjustments. What they've done is really good, right? The layout of it. And by the way, I, I like the image. I know you're scrolling. I, I like the uh, economic development image and then you're looking for opinions. I don't know if other people have opinions on that, but uh, yeah, great. it looks great. Yeah, we'll have to ask Montpelier Alive uh, if we can use some of these images just for presentation purposes today. I, you should be able to get them to agree, I would think, since we're all on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looked like uh, maybe Eric had feedback. Yeah, this is Eric Gilbertson. I'm chair of the Historic Preservation Commission, and we're applying for a grant from the state certified local government program this year to identify in a broad and general way the historic resources in Montpelier, possible districts, uh, those that are on the register, uh, so that there's a, a a summary of, you know, what is historic in the community, because I think it says somewhere in this that, you know, all the historic resources have not been identified. But we're going to look at all the neighborhoods and and have some kind of a general plan for listing those things on on the either the state register or the national register uh, sometime in the future. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Um, it, so, Eric, what is your uh, impression of this kind of draft historic resources page for the? Uh, it it it's great. I think it's it's really good that they. So we haven't identified all the historic resources in the community. That's important. I think the photographs are quite nice. Uh, 
and the focus on the downtown is appropriate, but we have so many historic neighborhoods. I, I think it's great. Um, to to your point, Eric, there is, um, Julia, if you scroll down, maybe like two more maps. I think there was some missing data in the data request about the location of historic resources and historic structures. Um, so if there is more information out there, that would be great to see. But also if there, it's good for us to know that there is a planning process to look at, you know, the character of historic neighborhoods and to kind of identify those. But if that does become a, um, a GIS data product, we can absolutely add it to this story map. And I think it would really help paint the picture. I mean, we're a couple of years out with that, but I'll look at, okay. uh, I, th I think we probably have data on what's listed one way or another. It's very haphazard in Montpelier, what's actually listed and what is historic. So. Okay. Yeah, that information would be great to show here. I think, you know, the intention with this map, um, as we're, you know, just scrolling through it here, is to show um, spatial information that's available for historic resources at a couple different scales. Um, yeah, like one of the advantages to story maps is the ability for this map to zoom in and show different layers at different um, you know levels of, of zoom here, different scales. So you know, here's the downtown historic district. Then here is the capital complex area. Um, and then with this layer, as Aiden mentioned, we were hoping to get some data on available historic resources in this area. And I think, you know, the purpose of this is not to show that everything's been, you know, evaluated and it's done because as this chapter points out, there's still, um, some assessment that needs to happen, but, uh, you know, if we could show, um, just even a sample of some of the known historic resources, I think that would be helpful here. I will work with Meredith particularly on that. Uh, and I mean, we're looking at things like the Meadow, which is kind of an obvious historic district, along with College Street, and there's a bunch of other ones. Yeah. But we won't, we won't really have that information nailed on for a year or two. Okay. Meredith, Meredith, jump in. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> um, so just to, to build on what Eric's saying, I mean, there is, for the individual buildings, the city doesn't have a GIS layer to get those buildings that were listed individually outside of the Montpelier downtown district. Um, you know, there's a few we know of um, that we can throw in there. Um, but it, at, it may not be at the GIS level, right? So uh, I'm not quite sure how you would pull that into your data, but we'll, we'll work on some maps. We can definitely pull in the, you know, the state has the GIS boundaries for the state districts in the meadow um, and then down at Granite Shed Lane. So we can point you to where that data layer is. Um, they're not individual buildings, they're neighborhoods, but we can pull together some stuff I think that would help. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So out of, out of curiosity, um, where, where's SC group pulling the map data so far, like for the things you do have? Yeah, so it has mostly been um, from the city. We have been submitting data requests um, for any information that we might need, and that includes photos as well. Um, and then there will be a couple of instances, I'm sure, where we're um, supplementing with state um, information. And I think I uh, did pull from VCGI on um, this map uh, of the, yes, of um, the growth center. Doesn't mean growth center. And, and are, you, are you aware that you know, the, we have a planning commissioner who's missing, John, who works closely with that in his day job? Are you? Aware. We, we have been getting some information from the RPC, but I don't know what John's specific day job is. Um, it's, it's the um, well. I mean, he 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 works for the state doing doing the mapping you're talking about. Okay. 
Okay. We, and Kirby, you might know this from our, our contract, but we do have some money set aside in each phase for essentially like new mapping sort of content creation from, from data layers that don't exist. So if we do find that we really want to be able to show something spatially and there isn't a current mapping product that shows that, that could fall into that category if we see that that is important and there's information to support that. But just for this group's knowledge that um, there is some money in the budget sort of set aside for things like that that may not currently exist, but we want to show here. Okay. I, I, I think Mike and John will be the two that have the most informed opinions about that. Perfect. Thank you so you much. Can be yeah. Speaking of Mike, um, Mike, do you have any feedback or impressions? Uh, yeah, I guess the one thing I was going to mention was regarding the question of the additional data and things looking slightly different between pages. Um, I think, as everyone said, I think having the some of the general head headers that are the same throughout are, are helpful. Um, I think what I would focus on and and Commissioners, I, I did send you guys a copy of kind of my notes before I sent them to SE Group on what I was thinking, which was to focus, make sure we focus on what is the story we're trying to tell. I mean, these are storyboards. Um, we have a limited amount of landscape and we really want, you know, if we just kind of ramble through it, it's, it, you know, people aren't going to get as much out of it. So we really wanted to try to focus, like in the historic resources, what were the messages we were trying to get across? And I think that's going to help to drive some of the content and what we're going to be, you know, what we're going to be focusing on. And I think economic development, if the story we're trying to tell requires us to do things differently, then I think we do things a little bit differently. You know, if we need to talk about data more because that's part of the story, then we're going to talk more about data and maybe less about maps. Um, historic definitely lent itself to having that information displayed through the maps. And, you know, as we said, if we get more information to display, that's going to, that's going to be helpful. Um, so I think that's where I would go. I, I might put what you guys had put for economic development in the, in the background. Um, I think when I was talking about the storyboard, what I had put in for, you know, for the benefit of some folks who may not have, um, seen it was really to kind of start out at the top with a couple of, of um, bites of information with some pictures. So that way people could kind of get a quick understanding of, you know, in this case, what's economic development, why is it important? Um, you know, just to grab people with a couple of things and a couple of pictures to set the stage for what the story is. And then we'd roll into the background and start walking our way through the story. Um, and I think, you know, in historic's case, we kind of had that with this story of trying to get to the fact that, you know, it's it's historic resources are important. Um, Montpelier is special and unique. And, um, you know, what is it that we're doing to help protect that? And that goes back to the story of understanding our resources, uh, making sure the community appreciates our resources and then protecting the resources. Um, and that's kind of, that was kind of the story we were trying to tell. And if people can understand that after they review the storyboard, then we've been successful, I think. Um, and that's how I'm kind of measuring it. Now, economic development is going to be different because it's, you know, it may not be as place-based. So it may only have one map, whereas, you know, the other one might have two or three. And I think we just, you know, while they're going to be very similar and they're going to have these same background synergies and goals and aspirations, I think the, the end product. Um, and so I think for, for planning commissioners, you have to make sure, and we have to make sure that we're giving SE group the, the right story. I mean, we wrote, a, we wrote chapters for each one of these, but I think we, we had big ideas and we kind of had to keep squishing them down to get our, our story. And now I think we're going to have to squish it even more and really get down to, all right, now we're getting down to these. And, you know, um, I think Kirby's question to SE group was good. You know, do we think we've got the right length? Are we not overwhelming? Are we kind of at a good space for storytelling? Now we just have to make sure what we're doing is, is good um, and telling the story we want. So I think that's, that's what I would, my, my two cents on 
on generally. I think what we've got here is is really good. I think we're definitely moving in the right direction, and I think we just need to start nailing these down. Thank you, Mike. And for the benefit of everybody, we have been taking some creative liberty on not every chapter word for word is represented on this website. So having um, sort of an initial reaction of, okay, like we have some scrolling to do, but it's not too much text that someone would, you know, leave the page and, and not want to read it. Um, so we have trimmed down stuff while trying to keep the intent and character of what was written um, and, to, and potentially move some of the material um, to like one of those initial little blurbs or it's in the implementation strategy or it's in the additional strategy section. So um, as far as the amount of content goes, it is less than what was in the original chapters. So I, I, I'm interpreting what you're saying is that you think it's at a pretty good place in these examples. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I personally do. I think that um, there's only so much sort of like visual conversion of some of the information that we're going to have to have a couple paragraphs of, of text here and there. And I think that the way that they're broken up and the way that the sections are laid out right now um, does to me provide a good balance, knowing that we will have more images and maps in final versions. But to me, it does break it up enough and provide enough um, visual diversity or so that I think people would stay engaged. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think, you know, story maps is at its best when it really is those like media focused um, slides, you know, where you're just looking at these like a couple words and, you know, the image quality is great. And so it can fill the whole screen and, and looks really nice. I think this is when Story Maps is at its best, when it's really media focused like this. Um, but, you know, as Aiden said, there's only, we don't want this to be like, you know, a scrolling adventure where people are just scrolling and scrolling, and scrolling to get to all of the content. Um, so sometimes it's just going to be more efficient to have some blocks of text. Um, so I feel that we've, try to strike that balance um, and we'll continue to, to do that. Um, one question I have as well about, um, you know, sort of converting the plan chapter to this story map um, is for the goals and aspirations section. Um, there's, I feel there's storytelling that's happening in the story map. And then there's also just, you know, trying to draw out um, some of the high points and like, uh, takeaways for people. Um, and in this section, the way I've done that is um, by numbering different um, initiatives that start with a strong verb like this. Um, and, you know, that's a liberty I've taken from the, the plan document. Um, but because this is more of an official section, the goals and aspirations section, I do want to check with the team that that is um, an okay thing to do. Um, or if, you know, there's some explanatory text that we should add here, um, you know, to explain that this is not verbatim, like, you know, what the goals are, this is a summary or something like that. I, I feel comfortable with you doing that. I think it is great to let us know just so we can double check that it's retained the same, you know, meaning this was intended. Um, from what we've passed. And as you both probably already know, I mean, city council might change some things too. Yep. Which, um, did, does anybody else have thoughts about that, those liberties? Um, I have, I have been sitting and pondering a, a sort of bigger, like meta question about who are we writing this for? And like two, there's two groups that are quite different from each other that I'm having in mind. And that's a casual user who's curious about what's going on in Montpelier. And then there's the like policy wonk type person who wants to, you know, 
for whatever their motivations are, they want to know the, the weeds. Um, and it seems like we're like the way that we're telling a story is that's more of like oriented toward a casual person, which is fine for me. But um, I'm, I'm just wondering how the like walk type person is going to, because what I imagine is those people are going to be the most interested in the strategies, which looks like we're going to have probably on the bottom of each page or like a link to something, a link to them on the, like, I, it looks like that part's still up in the air. Um, but that's just kind of, that's just kind of what I'm thinking about. I'm not uncomfortable about the way it looks like it's laid out now. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody else has thoughts about, about those users and, what we should be doing. One suggestion I have for that is in the hub site um, that will eventually, um, you know, house these different story maps. Uh, we can add a page to that that would uh, describe, you know, different intended audiences for these story maps and how they might like to review them. Um, so that wouldn't, you know, necessarily appear on individual pages here, but it could be a resource for people who are visiting, um, the hub site and that's probably, you know, where they'll access these at the beginning. Kirby, I think it's a, a great question. And I, uh, I think in many other projects, that question is asked much later. So thank you for bringing it up now. Um, my understanding is that we're framing this as you see it, and I think you identified it correctly, that this is trying to go towards the general population who may have some sort of interest. Um, I think the use of the links and the, yeah, the external links and external, as you said, like if you're more interested in strategies, go to this page. Um, I think that's really where we can leverage it to kind of play to all audiences and that we will have links to past planning documents. People will understand who the players are involved. Um, and then you can get into the nitty gritty a little bit more if you follow it, but it will take someone who is more committed to visit those links and to kind of follow those threads. So if, if this group is okay with it being a little harder to access the full, full picture, like people will have to put a little bit more effort into it then I think I think we can continue in the direction of having this more general population, but still not losing the information that um, a policy wonk would be more uh, in search of. Yeah. Th uh, so so yeah. What I'm thinking while you're while you're saying that is, um, someone mentioned uh, like like the hub page that you start from. If there could be a shortcut straight to the strategies from there, and and mm -hmm. you know. I'm talking, I'm thinking out loud. So, so I want to hear the planning commission's thoughts about this. Um, I could see like, like a person who's trying to use it for research. Um, they'll be able to go from the hub page and not have to scroll all the way to the bottom of each of these. So I think it's, if that's an option for us, I think that's how we can kind of make everyone happy. Maybe yeah. um, I could see us being accused of trying to hide information if okay. we didn't have an easy way to get to the strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I expect the implementation strategies will be its own page. It's just going to look very different than the rest of these chapters. Um, it's, it's the part that they're going to be working on with, um, with John to kind of come up with some way that we can present all the information that are in those Excel tables. Um, there's just no easy way to do that. And John has, I thought, a pretty easy way if we can um, get some opportunity for everybody to sit down. Um, but I think if we have, as they said, and as you said, you know, a, a direct way for people to understand that, you know, from that main um, kickoff page, that those strategies, whether it's somebody who's putting together an Act 250 application or somebody who's, for whatever reason, really wants to know what is the city going to do about affordable housing, that they know that the detailed policy section is over there. And that's really where um, staff, 
um, you know, your as you said, the policy wonks in committees. Uh, you know, I would I would expect and hope that over time the housing or, or the historic Re um, preservation commission would be looking at the historic plan that's in in the city plan to go and get ideas for their next set of projects. Um, so that's that's how I expect it to get laid out. But the chapters itself, like we're looking at on the screen, those are expected to be us putting information out, us us helping the public understand historic resources and why it's important and what we're doing about it and economic development. Why is it important? Why do we care? Um, what are our goals and what are we doing about it? Just so people can kind of get a, a general sense um, that, like you said, if they're policy wonks and they get to the bottom and they're like, you know, I really want to, you know, understand more then they can click that thing and they end up over in the implementations um, page where they can, you know, and we're not sure how that would appear. They could get that complete list or they can be able to scroll through or be able to search it. You know, I'm not sure exactly how it all comes together, but there'd be all the information that's in our Excel tables would then be accessible um, to people who want to be able to navigate that. Absolutely. And I, I think the hub site could be a good next uh, deliverable that we can discuss in our I think we have on the books for the next like mid December planning commission meeting. And I think that could be a good, good goal for us to come with a, at least a couple examples of other hub sites or um, the framework of what it might look like for this project. And obviously we, we still have to meet with John and we're trying to schedule that. So. Great. Uh, another another piece of feedback that I have, and again, planning commissioners jump in anytime with this with this stuff, um, is I would I would think that if we're trying to narrow down what what story we're trying to tell, that looking at the, the goals, uh, I think the the goals are written to be broad statements of what our you know overall highest priorities are. I don't know, would you agree with that, Mike, that if we were trying to to get be inspired to think of what story we want to tell that. Um, yeah, I mean, they can be related, um, but they don't have to be necessarily, you know, kind of verbatim. We're, we're telling the story of what, it, what our straight goals are. For something like housing, we may not even get down to the goals. We just may end up because there's so much to housing, we may just end up focusing up mostly on the the uh, aspirations because we did end up with multiple aspirations for housing. So maybe that may differ, um, but again, and we don't end up being a subset of that. You know, as we talk of the usually we want to talk about it. Your uh, your your audio is kind of wacky, Mike. Your your audio was was messing up there, um, so we didn't hear the end part. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just saying that this could be on um, you know, housing and then aspirations. It's yeah, it's not getting better. You sound like a drowning robot. Um. <laughs> you, okay, the robot's all the way drawn now. Can't hear you at all. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, try to try to get that sorted out. But I think I think I got the gist of what you're saying. Housing seems like the one in which we could probably all agree that the the story there is we've fallen very far behind on meeting the demand. Uh, but um, yeah, does anybody else have? Um, and hopefully, Mike, you can figure out what what's going on with that. Um, so are we, can I just jump in and ask a question here? Please. Something that I also have just forgotten that I know that we've talked about. But are we putting these pages out to be, I mean, what's our public participation process? I forget, <laughs> look like. It's happening primarily in the spring and there's going to be events. There's going to be, there's going to be places where we present it and put it out there. I 
did you um, did you have more questions like along those lines? No, no, I just I couldn't just because it seemed like we were talking about it like it was, you know, when she was um, when Julie was or Aiden was talking about the language changing. I was thinking, well, the language is probably going to change, could change anyway after the public participation process. So it was, that was all. I just had that question. Yeah, I'm I'm imagining the way that I mean um, the way the process is working so far. What I'm imagining is sometime in the late spring, as a planning commission, we may have to go down and like like when it's starting to get kind of near final form before we send it to city council. Maybe that's when we sit down and make sure that we still agree with the substance. I'm thinking that we'll probably have to do that. Um, or, I mean, maybe we'll do it informally where like people just do it on their own and when we meet and bring ideas, but a sort of, uh, the word's escaping me, but, uh, but um, yeah, a meeting where we're making sure that, that, that it's all come together the way we want. Anybody else have any more feedback for SE before they go and then come back in a month or so with the hub, which is, I think, a good idea? Okay, last call for comments before we move on the agenda. Well, Julie and Aiden, I would really like to express appreciation for what you're doing. Um, it's I can tell that that you've put a lot of work into making the different parts of it go together. Um, so we're seeing that um, and thank you. impressed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We will make sure to send those links along um, so they can be included in any wrap up or notes email that goes to the planning commission after this call. Um, and we are absolutely open with for feedback at any time, especially when the group has a little bit more time to scroll through and, and read. Um, but thank you all for the discussion this evening. Um, and we will be communicating absolutely with Mike and John between the, between now and the next meeting and with anybody else, if they have feedback. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. All right. So next on our agenda is um, follow up to the presentation uh, presentation from last time about the uh, Historic Preservation Commission's design review guide. Uh, that's why Meredith and Eric are here, um, other than just, you know, this is the place to hang out on a Monday. Um, well, I, so, I would just say, Kirby, I, I, you know, it was excellent. I had time to read through it. Very well done. And if others agree, I would make a motion that we move forward. That's to go to the city council next, I think. Okay. quick. <laughs> okay. Were you hoping to, um, before we, before we take up, the um, motion to pass it. Were you hoping to cover anything, Meredith? Is there any like loose ends? No, I'm I'm here in case somebody had questions or concerns about any of it. Um, just in case we wanted to make sure that we were here in case somebody had questions about the drafting process or any you know particular items. Okay. Um, Thanks. I I'm just here for the say answer any questions or any explanations anybody needs. And the same for me also. Great, great, welcome. Um, okay, before I address Gabe's uh, motion, just want to um, kind of informally see if there's any informal questions or anything first from Aaron or Ariane. I'm good. I've I've been good. It was it's it was great work, great document. You know, and I would just say as somebody who's you know tries to do work in this area, like to walk in, there's so much ambiguity, ambiguity sometimes in our uh, regulations to have examples and to be able to drill in and really look at that stuff and get some ideas, even though it's not handcuffing anybody, but it just gives you 
some thoughts, right? To start looking at really, really powerful, very helpful. Awesome. That that's the whole purpose. So I'm glad it's doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, thanks. We wanted a broader to address a broader audience, just those that are uh, in the regulatory process. Yeah, I think you guys knocked it out of the park. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, well, uh, Gabe has moved that we uh, uh, um, recommend to City Council that um, it adopt. I, is, is it an adoption process? Is that, what, is that what it needs to do? It's sort of a blessing, right? It's a policy document. So it's not an adoption of regulations. You don't have to follow that strict um, public hearing process, but we really didn't want to put it out as something that would be um, used by the public or the design review committee or referenced in the regulations um, because there's actually there's a place in the design review regulations that references guidance documents. So once everybody has blessed that this can be used, we'll then be able to next time the zoning regulations get changed, put that little reference in there as here's the name of the document. That'll be later. Okay. So, uh, Gabe, you moved to just recommend the city council. I don't want to use the word bless. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, it could be adopt as policy <laughs> instead of adopt as regulations, right? It's adopt as policy, maybe. Sure, sure. So we, we recommend the city council adopt the um, this kind of document um, as policy guidance. Sound good, Gabe? Does that does that capture what you were moving for? Okay. Uh, do we have a second? A second. I hate to, uh, hate to disappoint those of you who showed up to the meeting hoping to field questions, but <laughs> I echo it. Great. It was a great work. Very, it's a really instructive document. Really thought it was good work. Yeah. And we had a good presentation last week, so not surprised at the lack of questions. Okay. Is there any discussion for the motion? We have a first and a second. Okay. So those in favor of uh, Gabe's recommendation, recommendation uh, or, or motion to recommend, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Good luck at City Council. Thank you. Yeah. Well done again. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is Eric. Thanks. Uh... I appreciate it. it. It was a lot of work and it wouldn't have happened without Meredith and a bunch of other people. Uh, Brandy Sexton was excellent. Uh, one thing I did want to say about the planning commission and, uh, you know, before act 250, there was something called act 200. that required towns. Mike, you probably remember this. Uh, required towns to identify resources so that when developers came in, they would know where the town wanted housing, wanted a supermarket. And uh, uh, I wonder if anybody is thinking about anything like that. I mean, we're kind of starting it for the, with the historic resources, but identified wetlands, steep slopes, all those kinds of things, whatever the town wanted to. <coughs> And uh, I, the thing that made me think about it was that Ernie Pomerlo, who was no slouch of a developer, said this was the most development-friendly piece of legislation that it had been adopted in Vermont because it does a lot of the work that developers have to do on a, on a uh, you know piece by piece basis of identifying resources and <coughs> excuse me, telling the community, telling the developer where the community wants construction. Just a statement. <laughs> yeah. I like to think of our zoning as being that. That, you know, that's one way in which we're telling where we would like things. The zoning regs actually have language in there in some of the different neighborhood sections about that exact point. Um, it's probably not maybe as specific as what they did back in the day, but it is helpful for people who are looking and trying to identify. And then also, you know, just the planning department can be really helpful for developers 
calling in and trying to get some ideas about where those areas are. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Uh, okay, so we we have that um, that done. That's quick. Uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, Mike's done a lot of work um, on the utilities and facilities chapter and implementation strategies. Um, hopefully, you have your audio working okay, Mike, and we can um, go over. Did you want to go over the strategies and then uh, then the chapter, or what are, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah, we can try. I don't know if my speaker is working any better now. It's working right now, yeah. So yeah, let's let's go over the strategies and just so everyone knows, like um, as as normal, I I went over the uh, the chapter language today, and so hopefully everybody got to review that. So if we can get to that, hopefully we can just um, pass that out. But uh, go ahead, Mike, um, walk us through the strategies. I can do this here. All right. So, um, the utilities and facilities chapter is really looking at, you know, uh, a handful of things. Utilities, we're looking at the four public utilities, or we have three and we're creating a fourth. So, the, the Montpelier utilities are water, wastewater, stormwater, which they're creating right now, and district heat. So, we have four utilities right now. Um, and then there are also private utilities like your electricity, communications, wireless communications, and those those types of things. Um, so that's half the equation. And then the other half are your facilities. And again, facilities are split into the publicly owned facilities like City Hall, Senior Center, parking lots, rec field, cemeteries, um, and then non-municipal facilities. So under Act 200 that Eric was referring to, that's our title you know, chapter 117 rules um, were required to talk about certain non-municipal facilities such as schools, libraries, hospitals, and waste management facilities. So we're required to talk about those. So what I did, you know, looking at the aspiration is really kind of broken into four big aspirations. There's a lot we've got to, we have to talk about. So it, we're kind of stuck squeezing it into four. Uh, I know if John was here, he'd be disappointed that we've got so many aspirations, but I really couldn't find out any other way of doing it. Um, and so with respect to the four public utilities, what we really talk about, are, I mean, it's really kind of common sense. You know, we want to provide quality service. We need a steady state plan for maintenance. Um, we need to accomplish everything at an affordable rate for customers. Um, while keeping enterprise funds healthy. So, um, you know, there's just some basic pieces. I don't know if everyone had a chance to kind of look through these um, in detail, but most of this is kind of pretty straightforward. Um, you see it in our zoning regulations, city public facilities, uh, sufficient to meet current and future demands will be maintained and efficient, net zero where appropriate. Um, the private utilities we don't do as much with, but we're still required to have goals um, about them. So private utilities are universally available and where appropriate meet net zero objectives. And that's mostly ties into the electricity for net zero. Um, and a lot of these from Montpelier are pretty straightforward. It's not a big deal. You know, we talk about electricity, communications and telecommunications, Montpelier, We've got universal everything. Uh, you live in Montpelier, you've got multiple broadband opportunities. You've got um, multiple cell tower opportunities. You know, this same exact goal in, you know, I live in Hardwick. In Hardwick is, you know, um, you know, part of town has broadband. Part of town has wireless telecommunications. Um, you know, I can get a cell call at my house, but I walk 50 feet to my barn and I can't get a cell call. So, 
um, you know, that's, that's Hardwick. That doesn't happen here in Montpelier. So it's our goal, but it's a pretty straightforward one because we pretty much meet everything already. Um, and then the non-municipal facilities, usually the biggest one that comes up is the capacity of schools to accommodate additional growth, which isn't an issue. But again, um, under chapter 117, we have to talk about these things. So that's why we do. Um, so that's the four aspirations. And if people are good with that, I'll make a quick jump to goals. And this is where John... Uh, well yeah. Before we before we jump to goals, um, I will um, summon the spirit of John Adams, our John Adams, not the president, um, and say, uh, "We we might be able to to make it. Uh, we I mean we we could possibly do one one that's one that's utilities and one that's facilities, like like." I don't want to waste a bunch of time on it. It's not a huge battle for me, but like A and D seem like they could possibly be combined. I understand that there's a huge difference in what we're going to do about A and D because one's inside the city city's control and the other's not. But I don't know. I would just say if we wanted to step back with it, um, Yeah, we could combine A and B. I was just trying to keep things from getting too long and, and clunky between the two. Um, and that was really the only reason for, for splitting those out. Um, so anyway, that's I just I just thought I'd mention that if 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 there was interest in, in it. Um, but we can we can keep it at four for now as well. Yeah, I think there's possibly room for combining C and D. A and B, I think, would be tough. No, no, I was, I was thinking A and D. A and D. Because they're both, they both cover, um, well, I guess actually D does go more to facilities. So maybe D and B. It's just bringing utilities things together and bringing facilities things together as, an, as, as aspirations and then have the goals separate them back out. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And we can see how the goals and strategies play out. And sometimes if, if all the same strategies to implement B are the same strategies as implementing D, then it might make sense to pull them together. Um, if they use different strategies, then it might make sense to keep the aspirations separate, but we'll see as we get down there where, where it all ended up. Yeah. So I'm just throwing that out there to, to think about, um, I haven't been a huge advocate of having like one or two aspirations, but I know some folks are. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry about that. Nope, that's fine. Um, so some of these, again, we might be able to do some combining of goals. This ended up with a lot of goals primarily because of, of the nature of everything we're talking about, but for simplicity of my thinking through it, I, I kept them separate. So, you know, we talked about each one of those factors. So we ended up with three factors. Um, the, the service, the facilities, the plant and distribution lines, and then the financial piece you know, maintaining it. And so we've got the, then we've got the four. So we've got three of these times four, you end up with not surprisingly, you know, uh, 10 or 12 of these goals associated with the, with our four utilities. So maintaining quantity and quality of water, water supply treatment and storage system. Um, they, so they want to maintain that because we have good quality. We have good quantity of water. We just need to maintain it. Remember our maintain, evolve, transform. We need to improve the quality of our distribution lines in the city, especially of water. That's why we have all the water breaks. Um, and we need to maintain the responsible administration of the water fund and increase funding to the water fund to achieve steady state maintenance. So at this point, we do have good water funds. They are um, solvent. Uh, the issue we have right now is increasing the amount of water funds available so we can go through and meet our steady state requirements for number two, basically. 
Um, and then the same thing, we have that same discussion for wastewater, maintain the quantity of quality of wastewater. We have a very good wastewater plant. We have a lot of capacity. Uh, we need to improve the collection lines. We've got a lot of old lines out there. We've got a lot of infiltration. Um, and then we need to maintain responsible funds because we are doing a good job maintaining our funds. We just might need some additional funds to achieve steady state. Um, so those are pretty consistent. So we might be able to, you know, you can see how these all ended up the same. We might be able to combine one, two, three with four, five, six. Um, but I didn't just for discussion sake. Um, when it comes to stormwater, that's the one we are creating a stormwater utility. We don't have it yet. Um, in this case, we do need to improve the quality and quantity of our stormwater treatment. We don't do um, a, a we don't meet the level that we would want to for our stormwater treatment. We have our CSOs, our combined sewers, uh, that pollutes the river. We've got a lot of um, stormwater that is untreated that goes straight into the river. So we do have improvements there we need. We need to also improve the collection lines, separate CSOs. Um, and we need to improve the administration of it because we don't actually have the utility, we're still creating it. So. Stormwater will probably need to stay as its own thing because it has its own unique goals and levels. Um, and then the heat heat system, because our district heat system is it is a utility, it's also brand new. So everything is maintained, maintained, maintained because everything is in great shape. We just have to, um, other than the district heat fund, which it needs more money, other than the funding, um, it's in good shape. Um, facilities, the goals for B, you can see there are only two, ensure facilities are sufficient to meet current and future demands and maintain and where necessary, improve the condition of all facilities. Um, so one is about the capacity and one is about the condition. Um, and we separated those just because our goals for, for maintaining that are going to be different than the goals for, um, the facilities. And again, um, we're over here to private utilities where we've got Green Mountain Power and then down to D where we were talking about those schools and libraries and stuff. We've got goals to balance residential development with our schools. So we basically have one goal for schools, one goal for libraries, one goal for medical, the medical center and other health related and one goal for the um, solid waste management district. So, so we're required to talk about these four. So we have again, could we compress these into one? We probably could um, because I was just wrote walking through. That's what I did. I, I put in that way. Uh, Gabe? In the, uh, in the narrative, there's, there's some language that talks about the excess capacity we have um, for uh, sewer and water. I didn't see anything about schools, but I've heard you talk about it before. Could we add something in the narrative component to that? Yes, I don't know. I'll have to go and see. We've got the chapter written, so we'll just have to see if we, we have that conversation in there, but we should. I, I hope we would, because that's a lot of what I think the story to tell when we come to writing the utilities chapter is we have, um, we have the ability to grow. I think that's, that's the take-home message from utilities. Pe people can disagree with it from philosophical reasons or for um, whatever uh, reasons that they want, but it's not because we can't handle additional growth. Montpelier has an, enough water to double its population, enough sewer to double its population. We have water, we've got facilities that can meet our needs. So we are, we are in great shape to grow. Um, yeah. And if there's another chapter, maybe it's just a quick blurb. And then in the, you know, when SE groups writing it, it's a link to that chapter, but it was really apparent that, we, you know, the utilities are there. That's the thing that people are always going to say. And it's, well, no, we have capacity in the schools. Yeah. Yeah. And what they're talking about is, uh, yeah, what SE group just did was the chapter part that's, and that should have, our story is we can grow. We've got our utilities, we've got our facilities, we can grow. So, um, Then the strategies, so this one ended up with, we ended up with more goals than we had strategies. So there are 14 of them. 
Uh, I'm not going to read through all of these. You're more than welcome to, to take the time to, but um, the one set of strategies looking at continuing our utility planning, and this applies to all four, um, and it talks about a list of all the things that they are doing currently for utility planning. Um, a second strategy is our CIP, our capital improvement program. This is how we buy things and fix things. So it's talking about uh, continuing it and making notes of the things that we need to, you know, of note upgrades to water lines to accommodate new fire hydrant codes and those types of things. So um, utility and infrastructure incentive program, this goes to um, some of the economic development ties. So we have, um, for example, we did this with um, Caledonia Spirits, who would not have been able to develop without um, improvements to the water line, which we made. Um, and we hadn't, and we used economic development funds. The city paid for the improvements to the water line, not at, um, not Caledonia Spirits. We made those investments in order to facilitate that happening. The reason we did that was because they were going to buy so much water that we were going to be able to pay ourselves back on additional water revenues to pay back the money we used to fix the water line for them. So there was, you know, we had, you just need to have the money up front to be able to loan to yourself basically, and then pay yourself back into that loan program. So we have an RLF, we loaned ourselves money and we're paying ourselves back for that loan. So that way it'll, that money will be available to the next time we need to do an infrastructure improvement. So we do have this program in place and it has been done before. Um, Unified development regulations. So this is our zoning rules. Um, utilities and facilities come up a lot when you talk about conditional uses. Um, that's one of the types of projects and that always has one three requirements. Um, the character of the area, the traffic, and the ability of, of um, the communities, utilities and facilities to accommodate that growth. So um, if something's a conditional use, it ties directly into this chapter. Um, and usually what you want to have in this chapter is that we don't have any um, barriers and therefore everybody automatically probably meets that unless it's a really, really big project. Um, and then we get into some of these other projects, the roof drain separation. Um, these are very small specific issues of stormwater design flow policy, uh, stormwater uh, system maintenance programs, creating the stormwater utility that I mentioned, capital needs assessments, CNAs, as they're called, they, they're part of facility management. So if you were a property manager and you owned a number of buildings, you would have CNAs, uh, capital needs assessments. And that would go through and say, oh, I, I'm going to need to replace this roof every 20 years. I'm going to need to replace the furnace every 30 years. I'm going to need to replace, um, and you list out all of your capital needs. And then you start budgeting for them. So that way you don't end up with a really big um, um, bill come due. Um, the two, 203 Country Club Lane Master Plan, that's what we're doing um, right now. That's the Elks Club. That project is ongoing. Berry Street Recreation Facility Plan. So the Berry Street facility, a recreation facility is uh, kind of doesn't meet any of these six million dollars of improvements just to meet ADA requirements and other things. So we need to figure out what we're doing with it. Um, and then commenting on certificates of public good, we have the right to do that, and mostly that ties into the electricity. So the MIAC is very interested in making sure our energy committee is very interested in making sure that we are net zero with respect to electricity, uh, GMP has already agreed to go to net zero by 2030, which is good. And so that means we just need to monitor to make sure they don't change their mind. Um, and then we've got commenting on Act section 248 filings, which is basically if somebody wants to put in a solar project, you don't get a zoning permit to put in a solar panel. If you're putting up a solar panel, you're getting a section 248 permit. Um, because it's exempt from zoning and communication program with regional partners. So, um, and that's really uh, a program that's really about making sure we keep open communication lines between us and the schools, the Central Vermont Medical Center, the Solid Waste Management District. So 
right now, as far as we know, we don't have any capacity issues at any of these facilities. So our goal at this point is just to maintain our communications with them. So that way, if problems come up, we know we can help address them. And that was it. So as I said, these were, some of these may get um, shortened or, or abbreviated, but um, I, I thought the I thought the strategies when I was done were in pretty good shape, but I thought we could probably combine a few goals. Um, you know, there may be a few aspirations that we might be able to do a little bit of working on. Uh, yeah, I'd be in favor of combining some aspirations and goals. I think, I think that the, um, strategies are, are great. Does it, does anyone have any feedback or questions? So we have 20 goals. How many strategies did we have? There are only 14. Yeah, that seems like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, like I said, a, it was a, mostly to tie in to make sure we have that individual look at each one of the pieces, like maintaining this, improving this, maintaining this. If we don't break it into the pieces to first go through and say, all right, how does water look? It's this, this, and this. How does wastewater look? Is this, this, this. And so you kind of walk all the pieces out. And then when you're done, if there are so many of them that are similar, we can start combining them. But if we combine them too early, then we haven't really taken the time to think about them separately. So that was why I did it the way I did. Would it be okay that like, like it's, it's obviously, you know, we want to think about it separately, but would it be okay just for the purposes of listing, listing them to put them back together? Um, I mean, it's, it's up to you guys. My sense is unfortunately, like, as I said, that the, tr the tricky part about utilities and facilities, and this is going to come up with community services as well, is you just have so many of them that, you know, um, you know, community services, you're going to end up with, you know, parks and, and recreation and senior center and um, cemeteries. And so we're going to have a number of these things that are just going to, by their nature, end up with a lot of goals because we're going to have separate goals for each one of them. And I think utilities is just the same way. There's just going to be a certain amount of tendency to end up with a lot of goals just because we've got to talk about a lot of small things. We've got four utilities in the city. Um, and each one's in a different condition. But like I said, I do think we could probably combine one, two, three, and four, five, six um, because they do follow the same pattern maintain, improve, maintain. Um, I would think, I mean, we might be able to look through, you know, seven, eight, nine, but I think, again, we're kind of in a similar, those are all looking at improving. So I don't know. I mean, I'm if you're welcome to take it back, and if you guys want to just go and look at it between now and the next meeting, we can do that too and kind of think about it and come up with it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, th I'm thinking a, a couple of ways. We could just, we could give you some general feedback and vote it out. Um, you know, right, we could well, say, you know, do your best to combine some things and then vote it out, um, which would be fine with me. All right, I'll let you guys talk just for a quick second. Okay. All right. I mean, so I yeah, just look at like all the maintain things, you know, can, can that, we're, we're going to maintain all of these things. And then you got some that are looking forward to uh, things that we need to improve. I, I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of like, we can just use an ox for comma. For, if we're going to try to make like, um, you know, if we have three things to say the same thing, why, why not just put the 
all lump all the utilities together in the same goal if it's saying the same thing. Um, yeah, I mean, this seems my, this seems pretty this seems pretty reminiscent of how it was at the outset for the earlier chapters where we would have a pretty robust list of uh, goals and strategies, and Mike would then we just give it to Mike and he would kind of collapse it down into some more, I guess, pithy approaches to the language. I mean, it seems like that can happen here. So, I mean, either we can kind of collapse these things down or we can let Mike do it. But I, I mean, I remember in the past, we would sort of let Mike do it. So, Yeah. I mean, that's the reason why, the only reason I'm even hung up on this really is that in the past we, we did that. So let's, you know, make it consistent i'm also just seeing the sc group stuff and the way that they're laying it out there um i'd hate to see them list 20 goals in the way that they've been doing it that are all very similar i don't know i think seeing it on the website is what actually is scary to me at this point it's like oh, okay now i can see why it's not great to have too much Ariane, did you have any ideas? No, I think, yeah, that's a good point about collapsing to make it the website more usable and interesting. But I don't have anything other than that. Okay. So Mike, we're just, we're thinking of, um, yeah, just like leaving it to you. Um, to try to combine some of it. It seems like everyone's in favor of like combining if possible. Um, and Aaron was pointing out how, you know, you've done that for, you had done that for others, goals and strategies in the past. So um, I think we're all comfortable with that. Yeah. I mean, I think the list is good right now. I mean, I think Mike's right. There's a lot of, we just have to make sure that we're thinking through all the nuances between the different utilities and different types of facilities. And I think this list does that. We could either we can do it or Mike can do it, but I think there's ways to whittle this down, you know, to make it more seamless. But um, I mean, I think for now the, the list is good. We can, we can work out the language later. Okay. So, uh, sounds like, um, uh, can we get a motion to approve, um, the, uh, aspirations, goals, and strategies for the utilities and facilities chapter, um, with the, uh, direction to Mike to try to, um, uh, combine some of them to, to reduce the number overall number but that's a long motion but there it is well do we, do we want to have mike or someone else take a stab at sort of whittling it down before we vote it out or do you just want to do it now yeah it's up to you guys whether you um how much i mean if we if we don't vote now then we definitely will have to put this on the agenda again and go through it again Mike, and just I'm trying to think of this in terms of how this uh, folds into SD's work. What's the what is the time frame we're working with to get this stuff to them? So I'm trying to get as many chapters done as I can before basically the end of December. So um, we've gotten most of them done. Um, we're we're the only one I won't we won't have done by that time is land use. So I'm getting down to the final things. I want to say community services and public safety are the two that we're working on. And I have, I have pieces of each, but that's that my goal is between now and December 31st to kind of get done with those. I don't know if you guys will have fully approved them, but in the back of my mind, I want to know that I've gotten them all drafted up and ready to go. Um, because I really want to be shifting gears to be working as much with them directly as I can to be reviewing their drafts to kind of, um, cause once we have the template, you know, you, you guys have seen the template and we've agreed that this is what we want each storyboard to look like. Then I can work with them directly and, you know, take a little bit of creative Liberty 
as they were doing to kind of go through and say, well, let's, let's focus on this being our story and let's see how much we can pull this together and let's see what pictures we can get and let's see what graphics we need to kind of build it out so we can put it, let you guys review the review it a little bit more refined. Um, and that, that's my goal for the chapters part. Um, so that's a long wind, winded way of saying, I, I want to have all the pieces ready except for land use by the end of December. And I mean, if it's all right with the group, I, I'd be happy to, if you, if it's worth it, if this group thinks there's value in it, I can take a stab at sort of wordsmithing these, uh, the aspirations and star the goals and strategies, uh, just sort of see if we can whittle it down a little bit while sort of keeping the the key points that Mike has laid out in the list, and just we can vote on it next next meeting. It'll be a simple exercise. I think I just say this is my draft, this is Mike's, which you know we can just work through it pretty quickly. But I, I do I do think that there is some value in sort of narrowing this down a little bit if we can. That's fabulous, Aaron. Thank you for offering. Uh, I'm totally fine with that. Is everybody else fine with that? Yeah. Okay. So we can we can put it on the agenda next time and um, and we can talk about it. Mike can give us his reaction as well. Okay. I'll try to I'll try to get something in this group sometime next week, hopefully before Thanksgiving. And uh, so while you guys are digesting your turkey, you can look at my hand. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Aaron, I, I might go and make a, a second copy of this. Um, so that way, because once we start messing with this, it doesn't exist anymore. So I might just make a second copy in the utilities and facilities folder on the drive. Yeah, I'll make a, I'll make a working copy. So. Oh, okay. All right, sounds good. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. So we, we'll wait to vote then. Uh, uh, sounds, sounds like a plan. Thank you so much, Aaron, for that. Uh, how do we go up? And uh, so you want to take a look at the chapter, Mike? Did um, everyone get a chance? I, I know that I tend to send these things kind of late because I ended up setting aside time on Mondays for stuff like this a lot. Um, but um, did folks get a chance to, to look at the new version of the chapter? I just had a, I just was able to take a quick skim of it before the meeting. So I haven't really looked at it with a fine okay. comb, unfortunately. Well, that could be another thing where people can, if you, if we want to, if we're going to take up the, the other thing later, we can, we can also just wait to vote on this as well. Um, what are people's thoughts about? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, so this kind of gets to what the changes that Kirby made. Kinda, I haven't taken a look to see what your changes are. Usually you do a better job wordsmithing. I throw down the ideas and you can kind of go through and, and then this will eventually get shifted again. So when we get to saying, what's the story we want to tell, then we'll pick pieces out of this to kind of make the story. Um, And I think this gets a little bit to what Gabe was talking about. You know, we're talking about the capacity of the plants and what are the issues, water, wastewater, stormwater, district heat. And I think maybe what Gabe was referring to is we needed to have something more. I think it's that actually, yeah, if you go down, down a little bit operated more. Operated by them. Yeah, we don't have something in here that's as explicit about saying, hey, we've got plenty of school capacity. So so it's that it's that little paragraph at the top of the page right there. Scroll up a little bit, Mike. That's where it goes into uh, the capacity we have for utilities and facilities, but it, it does yep. not call out schools. And it should and, that, and so when Gabe said that, I was that was the spot I was thinking that we could add a sentence there. Um, what do you think, Gabe? Yeah, that's that's great.
I think most of these kind of make sense through here. I didn't fill this out, but I don't think we necessarily need to at this point, knowing how things have, how our format has changed for our storyboards. I might not spend the time building these out. Um, aspirations and goals, yes, but we haven't been doing implementation approaches, so there's no sense building that one out. Um, okay. Well, we can, uh, everybody just, you know, take, take time before our next meeting to give it a look over, we'll say, and we'll just uh, plan to pass both the things out next time. We got, we got to make sure we have a quorum, but we might have new blood by then too, which will help. But yeah. That. And um, so that is Thanksgiving week or is it? Th no, the week after Thanksgiving. So the Monday after Thanksgiving break. And does anyone anticipate not making that meeting since we're talking about it? Okay. So, so we should be able to, to vote out utilities then. Um, that sounds good. Uh, the, or did we have arts? We did have arts and culture. So I took another look at the arts and culture chapter today. It's, it's pretty short as is, but you know, we could, we could pull more info from the uh, arts and culture or the, um, the public art master plan. If we want to, I just didn't feel a need to until SC takes a crack at it. Actually, personally, I, I think that there's enough stuff for them to pull it out. I just, we don't, I just don't feel like we, we don't need long chapters. Um, it's like we have the intro, which is something they're using, right? We have the, how does this relate to others? This would be what they're calling the synergies. We have the summary of past. Um, are there any of those big section headers that's missing? No, I mean, they'll, they'll be, we'll have some getting into the goals and, and strategies and re referring back. Um, I think what we'd have to just figure out, like I said, with arts and culture is, you know, what's the story we want to tell and then kind of pulling this together to, to, dis, to, to tell that story, you know, what do we want to tell the public about arts and culture? And then that'll help us to finish filling this out. Cause we just wrote the chapters, not having any idea how this was going to be used. And now we're starting to get an idea of how it's being used. So, you know, we might just partially skip the step of writing all this stuff out. You know, I think how arts and culture relate to other chapters, we still should do because synergies is pretty much grabbing this stuff. Um, but the introduction, we might need to fill out a little bit more. There might need to be more information. What What's the story we want to tell? Um, you know, and maybe it's, um, you know, off the top of my head, you know, we, we're both you know, Montpelier is both a community that has a lot of arts and culture. And at the same time, it's also a community that is lacking in arts and culture. And, and it's kind of this, this dichotomy of, of things. And that's what the public art master plan is trying to bridge that gap that we have, that we don't have very much public art, although we have so much other art, um, whether it's galleries um, Lost Nation Theater, you know, the Savoy, um, you know, you could just tick off all of these things, but they're not, not, you know, very few of them or none of them are really public art um, in the classic sense. And so what the public art master plan is trying to do is to kind of balance, you know, and I think the story we're trying to tell is there's a lot of great and there's a lot of, I don't know, room to grow. And I think that might be the story of art, art and culture is that, that dichotomy of, you know, kind of showing off how great things are and at the same time showing off how much better things could be. Um, and maybe that's the story for arts and culture, but that's kind of up to you guys. What, what do you guys see as the story for arts and culture that we want to tell about Montpelier? I, I agree with that. I agree with what you said. 
Um, so, so does it sound okay to folks to, we kind of, we kind of have this stuff that SE group can use. Yeah, that's now that I'm more aware of what they're after and what they're doing, I realize that we don't need to write a ton as long as they have things to pull from. And in this case, for this chapter, they can also pull from the public art master plan. We should probably make sure that they're aware of that master plan for if they're looking for more places to steal photos. That's a 40 plus page plan that has loads of photos. Um, And the other part, um, just so I can go and check in with you guys on this, um, your your comment reminds me of, of another item that was one thing we added in to the to the new historic was about the players and what's going on. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that was because on our city's website, we have chapters for each one of the committees. And it also includes all of those historic documents and all of those other things. So rather than trying to find out how to list all of those old, you know, things we've already done, you know, the housing report from 2011 and the housing report from 2003 and all those, those things, my sense was if it's not really part of the story, we can talk about the housing committee. And then if somebody goes to the housing committee page, it has all of the you know, what's the housing committee and all of the past projects that the housing committee has been involved with and worked on. Um, and that might be, you know, especially if we call it out to go through and say additional information on housing and the housing committee, including historical reports can be found here at this link. Um, and I think that would clean up our presentation a little bit by not having to worry about those past projects. Um, I, think, I think that's a good idea. And that would go here with the arts and culture as well. Um, mm -hmm. Focus on our story. We can ref refer people to the arts and culture, you know, the public arts commission and I, at the public arts commission would have that, you know, in this case, the public art master plan may be a key enough piece that we actually put a link directly in it. Um, but many of the other smaller reports would probably just fall into what the public art commission is doing. So I'll stop sharing here. All right, everybody, everybody like that uh, plan? All right, nope. Okay. I was gonna say we'll have to, I was going to say grab Aaron's vote before he goes to to adjourn, but <laughs> he's already left. Okay, well, we'll just have to adjourn in a more of a. Um, yeah, we don't have minutes, so that's why we can't vote on the minutes. So as soon as we're wrapped up here, we're adjourning. Um. Yeah. No minutes. Let's adjourn. We just lost Aaron. That was his can I Irish just, vote. Can I just ask one one question here? Yeah. Uh, and if people don't want to hang out, that's fine. You know, the uh the, like the the larger, I know we need to get this planned on, but the larger conversations, like we had that uh this the pushback on changing the density, you know, requirements. Um what what's the process of having broader conversations about our zoning and how we can remove some of the barriers that could exist, you know, to create more housing? Like, how does that, how does that happen? Like, do you just say, because it seems like, okay, we're getting people to come in and say, we want changes and therefore you consider it. If it makes sense, then you're proposing these zoning changes, but how do we have a more holistic conversation about why are we doing any of these things let's just tear this stuff down and allow people particularly we just you know the policy we've got some great policy that exists in terms of you know what design might look like i mean when do we have those conversations 
I mean, we can have them when, whenever, um, part of it, you know, as I said, my, you know, my goal is to, to kind of get the, the city plan pushing forward. And as it moves out of your plate, you guys then have the, you know, the world is your oyster because you'll have, you know, zoning is finally updated and your city plan would finally be often getting updated. And so then you can tackle these individual projects, but, um, wanting to address this, you know, at the same time, we can certainly do it. Um, and it's just up to you guys to go through and say, Hey, we want to hold a public hearing and get public input. And we start to work with our communications folks to get stuff out on, you know, you know, in the same way that the, the Elks club, the country club road project is, you know, having a concerted effort of doing public outreach. And so if, the planning commission was like, you know what, we really want to have this conversation and it's important. Um, then we kind of push that. We, we push out a series of, you know, public outreach and public comment sessions to start to, to have that conversation. I think that's so how Kirby, you works. just make a note. I mean, I'm sure it was on your list of things to do after we get through the plan that we have to get updated. Right. But you know, what we what we saw in the last one, I know you already were making efforts, like how do we communicate some of this stuff? But basically we had all the, like, this is going to ruin the world people that showed up and we didn't have any housing advocates show up. And so how, you know, like just thinking through, okay, what is it that we want to do? What are the arguments? I mean, you know, as I, I've just been here, you know, maybe a year or something, but the more that I read, the more that I study, I mean, it's very clear. It's like, it's discriminatory, the kind, you know, zoning and the, the rules that we have keep people out, right? That's what we're doing when we don't, and we're not having people showing up to hearings talking about that. So there needs to be some communication, right? We need to do a better job communicating. We need to get some advocates there, but just, just so you know, Kirby, that's one of the things I'd like whenever we have time to talk about it, rather than just, hey, somebody wants to do something over here. So let's talk about amending this. I, I think we should yeah. have that more holistic discussion. Yeah, so so let me tell you the, the plan that's in my mind. Um, the uh, the city plan has come first because it's a you know statutory requirement, and it's honestly the way I think of it in my mind is like the city plan is we're eating our vegetables before we get to dessert, which dessert is like working on changing some things now that need you know action now, um, and. Uh, the plan has been in my mind that we are, we're going to address a lot of the questions that not all of the questions are so much really, but, but a lot of the questions that need to be addressed are some of the conversations I feel like, and I think that a lot of people in the planning commission feel like needs to be had. We're going to address those things when we take up the Congress for new urbanism report, and we're going to take that up and we're going to address it. And we're going to address all of the things that the CNU pointed out for us we we do have we have some recent history with a couple of the things that they brought up but there's more ideas that they brought up too for making big changes to allow housing and so we're going to have to there's going to be a policy discussion about how we want to respond to it and what we think the best way to respond to it is you know whether we take their recommendations or not whether they think it's we whether we think it's the right fit for Montpelier and then that's going to have a public information gathering aspect to it. And we are going to, you know, bring that to city council with recommendations. And we did lay the foundation with city council for them to expect us to do that. Um, it's been a long time. We'll have to remind them, but, but I mean, technically we, I mean, I, I, I more or less told them, you know, we're going to be back with, with this, you know, so, so that, that is what we're going to do. And in my mind, that's not the only um, time we're going to revisit zoning. Enough, as you've seen so far, a few times a year, Mike and staff collect things that happen in real time. And then we respond to zoning. We tinker with zoning for responding to those things. And sometimes that's an opportunity when we're opening that up to also have these conversations. So that stuff, that stuff sounds coming. like a great plan, Kirby. I just, I just, yeah. you know, just wanted to say, Hey, it'd be good to get back to that when we can, after we get this stuff done that we need to do for Mike. 
I was also thinking of since since C, the, since the CNU issues that the, you know the recommendations from them they didn't touch on the solar shading. Uh, I was thinking we might tackle that first because it's a smaller bite, but that's flexible. You know that's our decision whether we want to go go back to city council on solar shading first or if we want to handle the the CNU stuff, which which has to do with density and, and other things. Um, but we're, yeah, we're going to, we're going to revisit that. Um, when we, uh, as Mike was saying, we have the land use plan or the land use chapter, which is going to be work for us. The rest of these chapters we have to work on are not there. It's, it's stuff like we saw tonight, which is utilities and facilities. And that's just, pretty straightforward and non-controversial stuff. So, but the land use plan is gonna take work from us. So that, that's gonna probably take some precedence um, over jumping fully into the CNU stuff. And that's, that's not gonna be a, that, that'll be a good opportunity to talk about these items as well. Not as in depth as you're gonna to wanna to get into, but I think that's a good place for us to be introducing and reminding the public again and taking public input on the ideas of removing density. Um, I know John will bring up the, the parking standards. There's a lot of stuff that gets caught up in that the land use is kind of where everything that we've talked about, the other 12 chapters have all come together to kind of land and, and start to develop how are we doing on our land use plan? And, you know, what are we trying to maintain? What are we trying to evolve? What are we trying to transform? you know, on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis is kind of how I've been, you know, my mind goes to, we're really going to have to look at it at a neighborhood level. And that's going to help us make a decision on, you know, on density, you know, we, we want to maintain the character of the neighborhood, but it doesn't mean we want to maintain the number of dwelling units. Um, you know, really that those are, shouldn't be related at all the the only thing that really matters is is the design piece and if we can kind of introduce that in our land use because periodically what happens is we'll get to city council and uh, the attorneys start to show up and they start to go through and say yeah but this isn't in your city plan you really need to go and implement you got really need to update your city plan first before you should be updating the zoning regulations to do the things that you want to do and they're not wrong so because we're so close we might as well hit the land use chapter hard and hit it right and talk about all the things we want to do. So that way, the next time we make a proposal, that's, they don't have that card to play anymore. You know, we can say, yeah, nope, nope, we talked about this with our land use plan. Sounds, and, sounds like a good plan. And, and Brian, with your communications background, we certainly hope you get to join in here because there'll be a lot of communication that needs to get done. So anyway, thanks. No, Sorry for slowing no everything down. I, I see people are <laughs> dropping off. I didn't want to hog up some time, but I just, I want to get back to that when we can. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't have, we don't have a, a quorum to adjourn, but um, we're going to adjourn. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah. Vote, vote with your feet. <laughs>